E-A-R-N-S dot O-R-G forward slash N-E-D. This is also going to be recorded, so it will be available for later, correct? I just pressed record, yes. Okay. Wonderful. <laughs> and if you'd prefer to stay anonymous, you can uh, keep your, your either your mics or cameras off as you prefer. I'll do my best to stay unanonymous if there is such a word. <laughs> All right. Hey, thank you everybody for joining today. Let's start in. My name is Bill Stearns. I'm a singer in the Northeastern District with the North Country Chordsmen and Vox Stars. I also had the pleasure of singing with Dan Falcone and Dave Bagley and Dan Senior as part of a quartet that made it down to internationals one year. We were very happy to represent Northeastern District with Fast Track. I've worked with audio gear in the past, but I'm an amateur. And while I usually like to give presentations on things where I feel I'm an expert, I bring that up because I don't want anybody on this call to feel that you have to have five years of audio engineering training to do this. You can do this with just basic uh, audio understanding. I happened to sit down with YouTube for about an hour one night to learn about mixers, and that's probably the only formal training I've gotten. As many of us are, the option, uh, found the options for singing during COVID are limited. So I wanted to go over one possibility that I think might apply. We'll go over it in just a moment here. I'm going to give mostly an overview of the process today. I'm not going to go deep into the technical details. However, there's plenty of time for questions. So if you're wondering how this might apply to you or you have specific questions about how uh, you might use particular gear, um, this is a great time to bring it up. Feel free to ask questions at any point. If you're not asking questions, you may just want to put your mic on mute uh, just in case the dog decides it's time to go and bark for an afternoon treat. The link at the bottom, www.sterns.org NED contains a PDF of this presentation. You're welcome to pull that down if you want to follow along at home. I'd also encourage you to pull it down because it has some links that are rather long and annoying to read off. So uh, it's worth pulling down that PDF. First thing is the goal. We want to be able to rehearse together as a group, but COVID isn't allowing us to do that at the moment, not safely. So we've got a couple of things we want to do. We want lots of distance between singing members. And that means not just six feet, but 10 or 12 if possible. We do want this to be COVID safe. So I don't want to have any more risk with spreading COVID than I might get by simply going out for groceries in an afternoon. We can't be 100% safe, but I don't want to... to put together an approach that's going to give a, an appreciable risk. I want the audio to be live, and this is important. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the other approaches, but if you've ever tried to sing with, more, with two or more people on Zoom, it doesn't work. It just plain cannot work, <laughs> and that is no offense to Zoom, Skype, GoToMeeting, GoToWebinar, Microsoft Teams or anybody else, they're all doing their best. The technology just doesn't support what we need to do where I can hear chords, where I can hear people come in at the same time. I want to be able to hear the whole group and not just a single person. I'd like to do this affordably because none of us can pull out our, our wallets and say, great, I've got tons of extra cash. It doesn't work that way. And finally, I'd like to be able to see at least the director. I may not be able to see all of the members of the chorus, but I'd like to be able to see at least the director so I can get some cues on when to come in, when to cut off, and when to take a breath even. I will mention that what I'm proposing in the upcoming slides is not designed to be a replacement for a professional studio. You may buy gear, that can be used for that, but I'm not proposing that you all go out and spend six, ten, fifteen thousand dollars on a gear that would let you record albums and be the professional sound system for a live in-person concert sometime next year. The cost is too high. 
So I'm, we're simply saying, how can we get rehearsals working in a nice, clean way? I also won't cover what I think is a really awesome approach. Dan, you did this earlier this year where everybody sent in recordings of themselves and they were stitched together in kind of a montage. What was the song again? Oh, I'm not sure, but um, been multiple I mean like a virtual course. We didn't, we didn't do a virtual course. It was supposed to be a virtual course, but we didn't get to do it, to do that. Got it. No problem. <laughs> I won't be covering that, but it's also a fun project to take part in if you find this isn't appropriate for you. So we can't sing indoors the way we used to. We've already figured out that that's just not good for safety. With Zoom or any of the other teleconferencing approaches, you do get isolation physically, but the delay is impossible. Um, I, we've, there are a couple of different ways this can be done and all of them have variable delay. So even if 10 people all sing at the exact same moment at their homes, what arrives at my ear will be off. So we can't use that approach. Singing outside. We actually did this this summer with one of the groups that I'm in. We were about uh, anywhere from eight to 12 feet apart out on a nice grassy field. It works. You can sing together and you've got a reasonable safety, but the problem, at least for my years, is that if I'm lucky, I can get the people to my left and my right, and that's about it. The distance makes it really hard to actually sing, hear each other, make sure the chords are coming together. I didn't cover Jamulus. I know Anand did a talk on that. The link at the bottom of the page, I believe, is to his presentation. And so if you find that this approach just isn't appropriate for you and you want to see if you could continue on with a technological approach, that's great. People can stay at home. You can try out Jamulus and see if this works for you. It is just better enough than the other teleconferencing systems that it is practically possible. I haven't used it myself. Go ahead and watch Anand's talk and decide if it might work for you as well. The approach we're taking, we're gonna call the driveway choir. And this comes from a couple down in Massachusetts, uh, Bryce and Catherine, I believe, Denny. Uh, we'll have links to their website in just a minute. It's called thedennies.org, T-H-E-D-E-N-N-E-Y-S.org. And they put together an approach where you simply take a relatively straightforward set of microphones and headphones. You connect them together. Everybody sings into their mics and they hear everybody else in the headphones. It is basically that simple. There's a little bit more to it. That's why we have the talk today, but the approach works. I can have people as far apart as I'd like. I can have them 10 feet apart, 12 feet apart, 25 feet apart, and I still hear everybody, and I still hear everybody simultaneously. The approach has got one minor downside, and that's the cost of the gear. Uh, this is not free. You do have to come up with some gear to make this work. So we'll talk a little bit about how that happens. And you have some wonderful options that can help keep the cost down. Does it actually work? Yes, it does. We're using this right now with the North Country Chordsman and Vox Stars in the Hanover, New Hampshire area. I'm aware of somewhere around 10 other groups that are doing this. And there are plenty more that are either looking into it or setting the gear up now and simply haven't gotten to the point where they're actually using it. It, the audio that you get is far better than you would get if you were all standing together in the same room and singing together. I can hear everybody, even if it's somebody who's far across the room that I couldn't hear easily in a normal rehearsal setup. This is a, uh, one of the first pictures that we did for one of our first rehearsals. This is as the members were showing up and I wanted to get a picture in reasonably good sunlight. Our fearless leader, Dan Falcone, is back and just slightly off to the right. Everybody has an FM headset. And this is a battery operated FM radio. It's nothing more complex than that. The particular ones that we're using 
this is made by ZE Audio. It's just a normal FM headset, antenna on the side, batteries go in one side and then the tuning, the volume on the other. And everybody wears these for the rehearsals. You can hear everybody just fine. And the other part that everybody has is a wireless microphone. And I have one that I'm using here. It's made by a company called GTD Audio. We will have links to these at the end, so you don't have to write these down. I have a, a, an Excel spreadsheet that's called the shopping list where you can find the links to all these parts and evaluate them for yourself. Now, if this is a wireless microphone, obviously we have to have a receiver for it. We'll see that in just a moment. So in this case, we have just six people out in the parking lot. The approach that I'm talking about, depending on whether you're in a rural or an urban setting, can easily support uh, 60, 80, maybe even more people on wireless microphones. And if you run out of wireless, you can go with wired microphones as well. In the middle of all of this, this is the back end of my car. And I folded down one back seat to give me a little bit more space. I can actually use the other back seat to sit down and work with the mixers that are on the right. Can you see my mouse if I'm moving it on the screen? Great. So right here on the folded down back seat are the two mixers we were using at the moment. These take in the inputs from the wireless microphone receivers, and those are in the lower right. It's uh, can't quite easily see it. It's hard to get everything into one shot. But each of these mounted uh, units has four receivers in it. So I can stack these up and have you know, 20, 40, maybe even more of these uh, with four microphones each. So you can get to 40, 60, or maybe even 80 of these, depending on the hardware that you get. Um, this first rehearsal where I got this picture from, we were using a very inexpensive FM transmitter. We've since replaced that with a nicer one. Um, that's one piece that you don't want to skimp on, unfortunately, but you only buy one of them. So the cheap one that I have there was probably $45. The nice one is $200. It's a one-time purchase and it works for everybody. I want to show you one more piece. There's a battery pack here. And this unit right behind the left back seat will run this entire audio system, everything here for three and a half hours. So we'll talk a little bit more about that and I'll have a link to the specific unit. So everybody needs a microphone and a set of headphones. Can you share microphones? No, because if you're close enough to share microphones, you are close enough to infect each other. So everybody gets their own. I've set a personal goal that we never share them. If we do get to a point where someone leaves the group, they turn their mic back in, I have a long series of steps that I can use to disinfect it, but we try not to share them. We have mixers, wireless receivers, and an FM transmitter and an FM antenna that all handle the transmission of the sound. While I've shown you wireless microphones and wireless headphones, there's no reason you can't use wired microphones and wired headphones. So a Shure SM58 or a, an Amazon Basics, uh, just a standard microphone with an XLR cable would be just fine. So this is, an, uh, this is a Behringer Ultravoice XM1800S. And if you see on the bottom, maybe you can't, <laughs> there's an XLR connector. You plug in an XLR cable that leads back to the mixer. And those cables, you can buy them in 25, 50 foot lengths, and you can even extend them up to hundreds of feet. So you could absolutely go and supplement wireless microphones with wired ones. The whole approach, there will be a bunch of cables that you'll need to get as well. You'll find out how, once you've decided what type of microphones you're using, that will largely dictate the type of cables you need. There is a practical limit on how far the signals will go. And that, I generally use about 200 feet from the FM transmitter and the microphone receivers as my practical limit. 
It's not a hard and fast number, but if you've got the wireless antenna six to eight feet off the ground, the FM antenna, and if you have the wireless microphone antennas out where people can see them, by and large, you've got about a 200 foot radius circle around where the, where the antennas are for where your singers can be. And that might also include your audience if you're having people come in and simply listening to this process. One of the approaches is to have people standing as we had, but you can also be in cars. So the wonderful question that apparently showed up in the previous presentation, uh, what are you guys gonna do when it's 10 below and it's sleeting? We're gonna sit in our cars and we're gonna stay warm. Ideally, we can use the car radio. And in most cases that works, although occasionally we may have to fall back on the FM headsets if the car radio doesn't quite work. There are a few examples where that's the case, but this is a, this is a $16 headset, so it's not a big deal. For someone who's at high risk, leave the windows closed, put the fan on, recirculate. Never get out of the car at all, at all. And so we have some people in our groups that have decided that it is just not in their best interest to be anywhere close to anybody else if they can possibly avoid it. And that's one of the reasons why we set this up this way, that it would work for people in their cars as well as the people who happen to be right around the, the, the antennas. Wireless microphones are just a little bit more expensive, but they're not prohibitively more expensive. I am guessing that a wired microphone setup probably comes out to 40, 45, $50 for the kit per person. And the wireless one is 55, 60, maybe $65. So it's not a prohibitive thing to switch over to wireless and you can use a mix. You don't even have to decide in advance. You, just, you can buy these one at a time if you choose. There are limits on how many wireless microphones will work together. So we start off with uh, VHF, UHF, and 2.4 gigahertz. These are just some frequencies that are used by this type of gear. Depending on what you buy, you can probably come up with an approach that will give you 40 to maybe 80 total singers all on wireless. The quirk is that as you move down that list, uh, generally the cost per person goes up a little bit. So um, we'll talk a little bit more about cost later. With wired setups, such as the, the handheld mic that needs the cable that leads back to the mixer, you can absolutely do this, but you need to plan on having long enough cables so that each person can be far enough away from the mixer and far enough away from other singers that everybody stays safe. So we, you generally want to start off with about 25 foot cables, and that gives you some room to play. You may need to do two of those or a 50 foot cable or have extensions, which are called snakes. Um, I'm happy to kind of talk a little bit more about how that's set up. The way I picture it is that I have a set of antennas in the middle, might be in a car, might be a room, it might be a window from a building. And then I have four pods of people around that set of antennas. The, let's say the car to keep it easy. So I might have uh, bass, berry, lead tenor, or soprano, alto, tenor, bass in four separate groups around the car. And now I can have all of the sopranos together. I can have all the baritones together, have all the basses together, makes it a little bit easier to mix the sound and so on. If any of this doesn't make sense, it's okay. All I wanna do today is get the idea across and I promise you, I have some more resources at the end to help you when you wanna think about your particular setup and how this would work. And you're also, again, welcome to ask questions at any time. 
the mixers that we saw in that picture, um, there's, there's an interesting piece to this. The mixers can be the most expensive component in this system if you want to go out and buy a mixer with 32 or 40 or 48 inputs, those can be astronomically expensive. <laughs> it is, I, I looked for a long time to try to find a cost-effective way to get a mixer that would handle all my needs. And unless you really want to make this a professional job, it's hard to find one. However, if you're willing to say, I don't need everybody on one piece of gear, I'm willing to buy two of them. Let the mixer that I had, I'm going to back up a couple of slides. The mixers that we have here both have 11 inputs. They're $140 each. So about $10 a person. If I wanted to get a mixer with uh, let's say 32 inputs, I'm probably looking at at least $750 and going up from there for that unit. And for my budget, I am much happier putting out 280, let's say um, uh, $420 for three mixers, as opposed to $750 for the privilege of having it all in one unit. Do I lose anything with audio quality with these? I don't believe I do. And again, we just need this to work well enough for rehearsals. We're not trying to come up with something that is absolutely zero noise and absolutely flawless sound reproduction. But to my ears, I'm not able to detect anything that's wrong with these mixers. So in a sense, you're, you're getting them for a lot less money and you're not really losing anything by going with these. The company that makes the ones we're looking at is called Xtuga, X-T-U-G-A. And you'll see a link to this when we get to the, um, the uh, spreadsheet that helps you uh, pick out parts. There are some extra things that you can get with higher end mixers, such as uh, grouping voices together into what's called a bus. It's as if you have multiple outputs and you can have one for bass and tenor and uh, lead and barry or soprano, alto, tenor, bass as your group may be. Um, I didn't feel I needed those. And we actually have a way to do, uh, to group those voices together that doesn't require the mixers to do anything special. In some cases, your microphones may need what's called phantom power, where essentially the mixer pushes some extra juice out the wires to the microphone to help them do their sound. In most of the microphones that we're using in this setup, that's not needed. I'm happy to cover that. It's the only thing that you need to remember is if you're using microphones that do require phantom power, your mixer has to provide it. And the two mixers we saw uh, on that slide just before, they do provide it, we just don't need it. That you need to have a total number of inputs that's at least as large as the number of people you'll be singing with. So don't forget to include the director. Don't forget to include the audio guy if you want that person to be able to speak back and give people hints on how to change batteries and so on. If you need an input for a keyboard, make sure you've got that. If you want to be able to play audio tracks from YouTube, you can do it. Just make sure you've got the inputs, add them all up, and you need at least that many inputs for the total number of mixers you're going to buy. All right, does this work? It does. And uh, Dan, do you want to kind of talk about how this, this comes off as from your perspective as a director? How does the audio work for you? Thanks, Bill, you're doing an awesome job. I would say that it's even, a, looking at the silver lining piece, it's even interesting the benefits of using the wireless headset with the, the mixing system because I can hear every voice there's nobody that can hide <laughs> in this system. And so, um, yeah, I, I, it's, I can definitely act as a coach and I can uh, hear individual voices. I can also um, 
use some sign language to say when people are um, holding their microphone too close to their mouth or farther away. So, so we have we do have some new things, new challenges for singers. But uh, yeah, it is making rehearsing a joy again. And do you find that there's any delay from your perspective? None. Beautiful. That's the whole goal right there. Technically, anytime you have a, a, you know, a sound wave moving through the air or moving through a radio signal, there is technically a delay. But at a practical level, you don't hear it. There's, it doesn't stop you from enjoying the sound in the same way that Zoom stops you from enjoying the sound. And as we said, you can have as much space between singers as you'd like. We still use masks. We want to, even if we're inside or outside or we're 20 feet apart or 10 feet apart, we still use masks because we do want to uh, keep that risk down as low as we possibly can. The one thing that comes up is where do you put this? <laughs> I've started off this project using the back of my car and it actually stayed in the back of my car for quite a while. Uh, my wife has been wonderful in, in being willing to volunteer her car for longer trips and, and taking the dog to the vet and all of the rest because pretty much my car is kind of tied up with this. I can get around, I can buy some small amounts of groceries, but there's a lot of gear back there. You don't have to do it that way. As soon as you find a spot that has power, some place to put the equipment out of the elements. So behind a window is just fine. You don't want it behind a, a you know, inside a building that has large steel pillars between you and the outside world. Uh, but if you can put the antennas up to a window, the gear can be inside, the people can be outside or a mix. You can have people inside and outside, people in cars, people standing outside of cars. They all work. As long as you can see the antennas, it basically works just fine. If you want to put these into a rack, uh, the wireless units, I'm going to back up to the slide with the picture. Here in the lower right, where these are the actual mixers down here, way at the bottom but I have these mounted in what's called a portable rack. It's a you know, 50 to $80. You can actually spend more on these if you want them to have wheels and covers and locking compartments and all the rest. Uh, you can spend as much as you want. This one happened to work well for my car because it fits. Uh, if I had a pickup truck, I would probably go for a larger unit. So a rack is helpful in that uh, approach if you're going to be moving it or even if it's gonna be staying pretty uh, stable. You do want a 120 volt outlet. The mixers at the very least and the wireless receivers all need 120 volts. We, we went with a battery pack. This is from a company called, I believe, Jackery and I'll have a link to this later. It only has a single 120 volt outlet, but if I put a power strip on that outlet I can run the entire set, the FM transmitters, the mixers, the wireless receivers for about three and a half hours. If your power needs are larger, if you're running lights off of these, this is a 250 watt hour unit for about $250. There's a 500 watt hour unit for about 500 and a 1000 watt hour unit for about $1,000. Uh, and you could even unplug one of these halfway through and plug in a second one if you once it runs out of battery. One nice addition would be internet access. So if you can come up with a, a, an internet connection where you happen to be, we have set up all the pieces needed to stream this out through Zoom. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a minute. Uh, it's not required, but it is possible if you would like to be able to send what you're singing out to other people. Practical consideration. When it gets too hot or too cold, we can absolutely move to cars. We do want to make sure that we're protecting everybody. And so that's why I was a little bit adamant about not sharing microphones. Uh, if you don't mind doing a long disinfect cycle, you actually could uh, share microphones, but plan for that to be something that you do in between rehearsals, especially if you're having people who show up just temporarily. It's uh, better that people keep, keep their own gear. 
Another practical issue is batteries. Both the microphones themselves and the headsets both take AA batteries. So you do want to be able to pull together a large number of these. I went with Panasonic's Eneloop, E-N-E-L-O-O-P batteries. Uh, there are a lot of them, but in the end, I feel better about that than having to throw away batteries uh, relatively frequently. A set of batteries that's fully charged will probably last three, possibly four hour and a half rehearsals. So it's absolutely doable even with alkaline batteries too. Hey, Bill. Yes, please. We had a question from Tom Noble. Is it possible to use a converter plugged into the car outlet? To run all of this gear, I think the practical answer is no. You might if it's a low amount of equipment. Two things to consider. One, it does take us a relatively steady amount of juice to run this. And if you're planning on running a rehearsal that's an hour and a half, two hours, you're probably going to drain your car battery down. So my perspective is I would rather spend $250 on a battery pack and have that run dry and still be able to drive home without having to go and jumpstart the car. You can give it a try. I've got one more practical consideration about those, those inverters. When you run off of the 12 volt outlet in your car, many of them have a fan that turns on when they're under heavy load. And it might not be a big deal, but that could be loud enough that it might be distracting to you while you're trying to work in a nice quiet environment. I, I should point out that the battery pack I'm using is not a generator. No propane, no gasoline, no diesel. <laughs> It's just batteries, it is silent. And so that's a, another nice plus when you're trying to do rehearsals. It is helpful to have someone who can work with the audio gear, spend the time setting it up. Don't have to be an engineer, don't have to have tons of experience. There are a couple of groups I'll introduce you to at the end of this that where you can absolutely ask any level of question that you'd like. I bring it up because I've largely taken that role for the Chordsman and Vox Stars in that I stay over with the gear and I'm listening for someone whose voice gets too loud. When someone sings too loud, they've got the microphone too close and they're belting out a you know, really wonderful high note at the end. Uh, what happens is the mixer says, oops, that's too loud. And you hear this nasty clipping sound. It, it's like the screech. And so if somebody is just there to watch for the little LED that says, hey, that's too loud, pretty much that's most of what you have to do after the gear has been set up the first time, but occasionally adjusting volume. It also helps if you've got someone who's willing to manage the collection of headphones, batteries, and microphones. You don't have to, and it could be the same person as the audio engineer just fine. Um, it just means that you can kind of spread out the load. I label everything with the people's names. So there's no question if somebody sets their bag down or sets their head foot, headset down as to who, who that goes with. Two gallon Ziploc bags are great for keeping these uh, separated and making it easier to bring, bring them back and forth. As we get into winter, having a headlamp and batteries is also very helpful. A uh, little battery operated headlamp, you can buy them at Amazon, you can buy them at uh, L.L. Bean, something to, to light up your music. And you may wanna think about both either microphone stands, music stands, or both, depending on where you're going to be, your budget, whether it's easy to hold the music. If everybody's learned all their parts, obviously you don't need music stands, but uh, you know your groups better than I do. And finally, if we do have a significant amount of rain or wind, what's your approach? Are we going to move indoors? Are we going to cancel the rehearsal for the night? Just figure that out as well. The electronics here, uh, they are mostly protected by the car, uh, but I would not want to have that tailgate open when, with, a, with rain coming down and a significant amount of wind. I could lose a lot of electronics in a very short period of time. One consideration that isn't needed for the rehearsal is whether you want to record or stream the live audio. So 
once you've got the sound coming in from your individual microphones, you do want to mix it together. Could we feed that into a multi-track recorder and have individual tracks of, of uh, bass, berry, lead, and tenor, or soprano, alto, tenor, bass, and be able to record those for later review, sending them out to the group? Uh, maybe you have members who couldn't make it and can't stream, but you still want to get them something to listen to and learn from. You can do that. Um, I happen to like a, a, a model called the Zoom H6 and H8. Zoom is a Japanese company. It has nothing to do with the Zoom uh, in teleconferencing software we've been using so much. The Zoom H6 has four XLR microphone inputs, which is just perfect for recording soprano, alto, tenor, bass, or bass, berry, lead, tenor. Uh, and I can record them on this without needing a laptop at all. It's all recorded on here on an SD card. I can do mix downs. I can make learning tracks from these. And the older brother for this, which just came out this summer, is called the Zoom H8. It has two more inputs on the side. And both of these allow for additional microphone inputs on the top. You buy one more add-on part, and the H6 goes up to six inputs, the H8 goes up to 10. So this is kind of a, a wonderful way to do multi-track recording if that's part of your goals. Now, could we send this output of the live rehearsal back to a Zoom call? Again, Zoom teleconferencing. It sounds like that's a bad idea because we already talked about the fact that you get this delay and it doesn't work. Well, if you're just transmitting, if you have all these voices in your building or around your car that are already lined up and the voices are coming together and you have a live sound, I can send that back out to a Zoom call. And now anybody who can't make it to the rehearsal, maybe they're on quarantine or maybe they're off on vacation, they can listen to what you're doing and they can sing along. They just can't take, they can't send their voices back and take part that way. So you do need a laptop for that one particular piece, but it is doable. And if you're interested, I'm happy to talk a little bit about how that's done. You have to do a little bit of setup, but it's not impossible. So to pay for this, you knew there would be numbers involved sooner or later. The nice part is that setting this up tends to be somewhere around maybe $85 to 100 and let's say $50 a person for all of the gear. Now that includes the FM transmitter that's shared by everybody, the mixers, which are shared, but you can only put a certain number of people on each. The FM transmitters, where you basically have to buy one for every four people, or sorry, FM receivers. The, the microphones that people use to sing back to the receivers, the headphones, the batteries, and so on. Um, I'll sh at the bottom, uh, I'm not gonna read the link off, but as soon as you download the PDF, it's a clickable link, is a spreadsheet. Anybody can pull this down. I encourage you to simply ask, you know, go up to your file menu and say download as spreadsheet or make a copy. If you like Google uh, Drive, just make a copy for yourself in your own thing. Then you can fill in the numbers of how many people you have, how many people you want to give wireless mics to and how many people you want to give wired mics to. Uh, do you want to buy a battery pack? Do you want to buy so-and-so? Anything on there can be replaced. The way it's set up right now is that you can simply fill in those values. And I'll, sh I'll show it to you at the end. I'm not sure how it affects the presentation. I'll, I'll bring it up at the end so we can go through it. But it gives you a total cost and a cost per person if you're trying to split the costs up. Maybe your group's uh, internal budget pays for part of this. Maybe individuals contribute for part of this. Maybe they buy their own headsets and microphones and you buy the rest. If you've got some of this gear already purchased, awesome, continue to use it. And then you can cut the cost down by that much because you don't have to buy as many, let's say mixers because you already have one in place. 
One thing to consider is if you have two or more groups using this approach, you have to buy the gear for the largest group. Let's say I'm trying to support a 16 person and a 12 person group. So I need to buy everything I need to totally outfit 16 people. Then I go back and I buy 12 more FM headsets and 12 more spare wireless microphones. And GTD will sell you the wireless microphones without the additional receiver. So now I hand those off to the second group. They use the same receivers as the first group. You can't have both groups singing at the same time. If you only have four receivers with four channels each, I can have either the 16 person group or the 12 person group. I can't have all 28 people at the same time because you can't have them sharing. But if group one sings on Monday and group two sings on Wednesday, you're all set. They can share just fine. Where could this go? I could absolutely see people doing a drive-in concert where the singers are all singing live around the uh, central point and you have people drive up in their cars to listen or you bring the gear to a, a senior center or an apartment complex or a big parking lot. There you go. <laughs> We've done this and I, I have not personally done this, but some of the groups that are involved in this absolutely have and they say it works quite well. You could send the audio out through speakers as well. So you could have the singers on the back side of the car and then put a PA system that is turned around facing the front of the car and your audience is on the other side. So you do have this car in the middle, unfortunately. Maybe you take the car out of the equation, you put, this, put it down on the ground, maybe put a little cover over it. And then you have the singers facing the listeners who are in their cars or standing around, whatever is appropriate. Make sure that your neighbors are not uh, expecting a nice quiet evening at home and uh, suddenly get <laughs> interrupted with lovely, granted lovely barbershop sound. If you want to do sectional rehearsals during a rehearsal, you could do this with three more FM transmitters. It's a little worky and it's moderately expensive. So I'm not pushing it as a primary goal, but you absolutely could have with just a little bit of pulling a couple cables out and moving things around just a little bit, have the basses listen to the basses, the baritones listen to the baritones, the tenors and listen to the tenors and the leads listen to the leads. And then you get back together and you do a little bit more rewiring and you're back live and you hear everybody. An alternate way to do that is to say, I've got a seven o'clock to nine o'clock rehearsal. I'd like the baritones to come in at 6.30. And I'd like the tenors to, to stay until 9.30. And now you've got the main section where everybody hears everybody and you have your mini sectionals at the beginning and the end and there's no additional gear needed. So just one approach. Last point. Do we throw this all away once everybody's got a vaccine? Oh, heck no. <laughs> the audio that you get, it is very hard to say why. If I could actually have a, a group here right now in the background doing this live, the one thing you would hear is everybody. As Dan said, he's the, the director of the two choruses that were primarily using this gear. He, you hear everybody. It isn't the case that somebody can just stand off over to the side and not know what they're doing. You hear that. Our first rehearsal, I could, do, I could explicitly hear one of our members who was scanning up and down and looking for where his note was going. And that might have just kind of fallen away in a normal rehearsal if that person was far enough away from the director. There's no place to hide with this gear. So once we're all done with COVID, consider rolling this out once a month. Get everybody back on this gear. Make sure you've got good batteries. So they all have died in between. But get everybody back on the gear so you can hear everybody. 
and listen for where there are mistakes in particular parts. Make sense? Okay. So if this is of interest to you, think about a couple of things. How many singers are practically going to show up? It will probably be less than you had on the risers in January. It will also probably be more than you've had in the past couple of months on Zoom. Because people realize now we are almost back to where this is a normal rehearsal. It isn't, but it's close enough. So come up with the right number, have a couple of extra sets involved, um, plan for the number of mixers and the number of wireless receivers. That tends to be the, the limiting point for how many people you can have. We have some documents. If you look down on the screen, I'm going to direct you to a site called thedennies.org. Uh, Bryce and Catherine Denny are the two directors that I mentioned a little earlier that have been uh, evangelizing this approach. They have some wonderful documents, enabling audio, enabling choral singing during the time of COVID or something like that. Uh, version 0 0.7 is out. It's at the bottom of that page. And rather than me trying to maintain my own docs with all the things that I've learned from this process, I simply talked to Bryce and said, can I just add to your doc? He reviews it, adds it in. And this has turned into a massive tome, 40 pages, that no one is expected to read end to end. But on the day where you're saying, okay, what wireless mics do I buy? How do I compare these? Are these good enough? Could I buy these other ones? Go down to the wireless mics section, take a look at what's there, and we will tell you where things haven't worked in addition to what has. The spreadsheet, the driveway choir shopping list spreadsheet, I'm going to show you that in just a minute. And also at the Denny's website, they have some YouTube videos. And those are great if you're trying to um, describe this to your board or to your membership and say, here's how this looks, here's how this works. It's a little hard to do it without those videos. So as soon as people see the videos, the light goes on and says, aha, we can do that. So please go and give those a try. I would like to include myself among the people who are willing to be mentors. So I'm going to, in, the, in I think the next slide, I'm going to show you my, uh, not only my email address, but my cell phone number. Please take me up on it that I am willing to take a call basically any waking hour in Eastern time, uh, walking you through what options you have, listening to what problems you have, what questions you have. If you just like to ask some things privately or say, you know, how do we handle hearing aids? We have a whole section on how to handle people with hearing aids and assistive listening devices in the, in the Denny's um, master doc. So uh, whatever your questions are, even if it's just, hey, can you walk me through how we do this? I would very much like to help. So take me up on the offer. You probably want to start off with a, a small group. Uh, one on each part, four parts is probably a good way to do it. Make sure you include your director. And if you have people on a music team or other people who have to think about whether this is appropriate, have to approve the process, start off with four people, make sure it works, add in a director and music team and uh, the board, have them come along. They can just put on headphones or you can give them microphones as well and uh, make sure you label them because if you continue to use this gear, you wanna have them end up with that same gear. So for questions, we got a couple of things to start with. If you have a Facebook account, do a search for Making Music During COVID. This is the group that the Denny's started up. And this is one of the places where you are absolutely welcome to uh, share your successes, share your questions, ask if a part will work. Um, any level of audio <laughs> question is absolutely welcome. So there is no such thing as a too basic question for this group. The Denny's uh, website has that doc I talked about. My email address is william.l.sterns, S-T-E-A-R-N-S at gmail.com. My cell phone is 603-996-1069.
and please take me up on any time I can help. I do want to thank Dan, Bruce, the, the Chordsman Vox Stars. They, we actually went through and bought 30 sets of headphones and microphones, and we got the audio gear in the middle. Um, the, the Chordsman and Vox Stars parent organization, the, the Hanover chapter, paid for the headphones and microphones, and it was about $56 a person times 30, so $1,600, something like that, for just that part. We also had some people who helped out with the early dry runs. Thank you for them. Dave Robinson was nice enough to help out with some guidance on how to put this together. The, oh, also sweetwater.com uh, has been wonderful. I apologize to say that sometimes their prices are higher than Amazon. And I have had to unfortunately fall back on Amazon just because of the expense. Uh, but they're, they have some wonderful videos and some wonderful tech documents on how to actually put this stuff together. Um, just a moment, and I think that's the end of that. I'm going to switch over to the shopping list spreadsheet. Now, can you still see a spreadsheet on the screen? Is that it? Great, wonderful, good. So this spreadsheet, um, you find the link in the PDF. Remember, that's at www.sterns.org slash NED. The yellow boxes are the ones that are you're intended to fill in. So if I say I would like to have four people on wired microphones, and I put that in there, and then I have, I'd like to have uh, 12 on wireless microphones. The entries here show up how many of these individual parts I think you need. And then the links to each product that I'm recommending are over here. These are not affiliate links. I don't get anything back for you clicking on. They're, they're the actual raw Amazon link. And down at the bottom, I get a total amount for this approach, $2,281.85. And if you split this evenly among what would be 16 people, that would be $142.62 per person. If you say to me, but Bill, we already have, um, let's say, oh, we already have 16 FM headsets. Well, this was a calculated value. Erase that, the function goes away, and now you don't have to pay for that part and the totals drop accordingly. The other thing to note is, hey, we don't like this particular FM headset. Could we put in something else? Absolutely. Put the price in here, Put the link in here for your own reference later so that people know what to order. And it calculates, obviously, the price based on what you entered. So you've been wonderful to listen to me blather for 52 minutes. I would love to open it up to any form of question that you have. Feel free to unmute yourself, and I'd love to fill, help out where I can. So, um, Bill, I'm Ken Brendamore from Providence Chapter. Hi, Ken. Uh, uh, yeah, I was I was frankly really excited when you said we could do sixty to eighty. Um, I, I'm thinking we may be at thirty. Uh, we might want to be ready for forty. I don't know, but sure. but are are there groups that are? I mean, what is the largest that you've seen at, at this point? Or, or maybe it's a silly question. It sounds like it's as simple as buy enough receivers and the mixers will sink. Almost, you, you got the right idea. Um, the, these are not generally large groups, but they can be. The quirk, the only real limitation is that you have a limited number of frequencies that you can use for the wireless mics. And in an urban setting where you may have TV stations that are, that are stomping on some of those frequencies, uh, or other uses, you in Providence might find that you can only support 45 wireless mics. I'm up here in the middle of New Hampshire, which is just this side of a Faraday cage uh, with mountains around and maybe two television stations you could get over the air if you're lucky. Um, I might be able to get 65. Take that number and say, wait, we've got 80 people, no problem. You just extend the rest with wired mics. So it isn't the case that the wireless frequencies 
limit you. They just limit you for the number of wireless mics. And then you can use wired mics on top of that to, I, I would say we could work together and come up with something up to 120, maybe 150 people. Um, it would be a lot of cabling. Let me put it that way. <laughs> Does that answer that, your that, question? Yeah, that, yeah, it's awesome, Bill. I'm so excited because I, I remember back in July, I said, what the hell? Broadway does wireless. Why the hell can't we do that for Barbershop? And so I'm really excited with what you got, Bill. Wonderful. Bill, you Other had a question from Alan Lamson. He wanted to know what the website was again. Sure. Yep. Uh, www.sterns, S-T-E-A-R-N-S, dot org slash n e d so remember stearns has an a in it so that's my website and that's where you can find this presentation you can pull it down and then the links in here that i'm just showing up on the screen you'll be able to click on directly as it as it's a pdf download other questions requests uh Things that you'd like to know about how it applies to your group. Um, I, I'd just like to share that uh, this is Jonathan Watson from Vocal Revolution in, in Concord, Mass. Um, the quartet Have Voices Will Travel came up with a similar situation where we used uh, USB headsets with microphones and 10 meter cables all running into uh, a powered USB hub. Uh, so it's, it's very inexpensive. And then that goes to a MacBook running uh, Logic Pro software. So it's, it's a software mixer. Wonderful. Uh, and and we, we easily support six uh, in a backyard. Yeah. We actually, uh, when we first did our dry runs, I was reasonably confident we were going to end up with what are called gaming headsets. And they are stereo headsets with a microphone like you've got right now coming out the side and a combined single cable. And I had all of this gear lined up thinking that would work. And then we tried it. Uh, the USB approach is gonna limit you for distance. The gaming headsets we tried, unfortunately had a lot of noise. There was a lot of static scratchiness that came over. And it's really distracting when you have 30 microphones all feeding that sound back in. So uh, it isn't a, it is not turning down the idea at all. Whatever works for you is beautiful. I'm only pointing out that you may have to think about the number of people you've got, the distance they need to be away. And then uh, the audio quality is the third consideration. Once you've thought through all of those, then you'll that will help you decide whether you're going with a USB headset like you described, a, uh, a gaming headset uh, or separate headset and microphone combinations. Nice presentation, thank you. My pleasure, I had a lot of help. Anything else I can help with today? Bill, can you unshare your screen just so we can give you a big round of applause? Hey, <laughs> I'll do see, my best. See all I can people. see everybody now. So Okay, let's give Bill a big round of applause. <laughs> Thank you for explaining that in, in a way that uh, is understandable. And he has uh, un unlimited amounts of, t <laughs> it seems, patience for explaining how your chorus or quartet can use this technology to sing in these times. So thank you so much, Bill. And this will be recorded and put on the NED website for, for folks who weren't able to join us today. Thanks so Bye. much, Bill. My pleasure. And my last comment, if I may, is that uh, please take me up on uh, offers of help. It's a sincere one, and I'd love to help you in any way I can. Thank you, Dan.